Hello and welcome to Spa Business Mastery. My name is Kirsten Voss and I am so glad you're here, dear spa owner. So today's topic is how to get organized with your staff summer vacations because spring is in the air and while we are in the process of you know planning out kind of late spring, early summer, what might be happening in the spa, um, it's definitely time to think about the HR aspects of your business if you have a team and what you need to do to prep for summer vacations because you know your team needs a break. You need a break. We all need a break. This is a really, this is a high energy output uh, role that we're in as service providers. So having some time off is critically important to not burn out your team. Um, burnout is high in this industry. And it's no wonder when, especially over the past couple of years of, you know, what's been going on with the world. Um, there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of anxiousness, there's a lot of sadness. And, you know, I've heard over and over again from estheticians and spa owners alike that, man, the past couple of years have been really hard to be present for your clients. And I've even heard, and I totally approve of this, that, you know, there's kind of no, no COVID zones in terms of not, there's certain topics not to talk about and COVID being one of them, because they're just so burnt out about hearing about it all the time. So, you know, all of this to say is that we have to value vacation time off for our team members so that there's sustainability in your business, there's sustainability in their career, there's sustainability in your career. So what that means is that, you know, the friction of this is that, you know, summertime is often a really busy time for a lot of spas, especially if you um, are full service and you have waxing services and pedicures and manicures and tanning and all that kind of stuff. It's usually crazy, crazy busy. It starts really picking up um, in May for sure and does not slow down until September. So, you know, what do you do with this juxtaposition of, you know, having a really busy season and knowing that you need to give your team time off and, and to, you know, support them with their vacation. All right. Now <laughs> let's first talk about managing expectations before I get into giving you a system for summer vacations for your staff. Now, the past two years have been really tough on spa leadership. It's been tough on everybody, but you know, with this conversation, I, we're really talking about leadership. And um, because you guys have all been having such a hard time with retaining team members, as well as the recruiting and hiring process, there just doesn't seem to be a lot of people looking for work. If you have not already heard about the great resignation or the great reinvention that's happening right now, I urge you to go look on Google for it and do some reading about it because it is happening all over the world, not just to the spa industry. Now, the great resignation or the great, re great reinvention is really about the past two years have had such a profound effect on people that they are quitting their jobs. They're quitting their careers. Um, they're rethinking how they want to live in this world. I know that I've had a lot of, I've been doing a lot of thinking about that. It started in 2022 when we were shut down. My husband and I had some really great conversations about, huh, wait a minute, you know, our, the plan that we had, maybe that actually isn't even relevant anymore. Um, if we're both remote workers, if we have our, if all our kids are out of the house, which they are now, that changes a lot for us. We don't necessarily have to stay here where we are in our little town. It also started us questioning, like, do we want to stay in our careers? Are we happy in our careers? Um, if we are there, if there's happy bits, what parts do we want to augment in that? And what parts do we want less of? So I know that you have thought, had those feelings and those thoughts and those probably those conversations with your friends and your partner as well. And while you as a spa owner, because you are an entrepreneur, don't you feel there is definitely a lot more, um, it's not as easy for you 
to have the great reinvention or, you know, the great resignation because you have um, committed a lot of time and money into your business. It's just, you know, employees have more fle- more uh, flexibility to take part in this great reinvention or the great resignation. It's not to say that if you really feel like you're, a, <laughs> this is done for you and, you know, you've had your career and it's been great and you, it's just not jazzing you anymore and it's just not fulfilling you like it used to you get to reinvent yourself you get to shut down your shop if you want and move on to something else there's nothing to say you have to stay here okay I digress because we're talking about summer vacations but we really need to take into consideration our own expectations of employees with what's happening in the world right now because it means we need to be more flexible If we apply the same vacation requests um, policies that we had five years ago, 10 years ago even, they could have been a lot more rigid. But because of what the state is of um, employment right now, it means that we're going to have to be a little bit more flexible when it comes to uh, vacation requests and how to manage those. All right, okay. So we've talked about managing our expectations as an owner, um, as the head of HR in your own company. So um, we next need to talk about creating a system for for vacation requests, all right? We need a system because if if it's just kind of loosey-goosey and, you know, you get some, you know, say team members start asking you, hey, I want to make, you know, I, I plan on going camping for a week next month. I won't be here. And they just tell you that, right? And expect the books to be cleared off for them. Um, It it adds a lot of complications, a lot of uh, complexity to your leadership if you don't have a vacation request system. So I would like to give one to you. So I want to share the one that I used with my team. And I will also share the little twist that we have to take on that um, You know, in consideration of what's happening in the world in terms of employees. Okay, so summer vacation requests. My policy with my team was that they had to submit their vacation request to me by May 15th. And yes, that may have put a wrench in some of them who like to do vacations on the fly. But the fact of the matter is, is that when we work as a team um, in any other business and any other company, you know, saying you need a week off, like in, you know, three weeks down the road, isn't, isn't the flexibility that I'm talking about. That does not help the business. It it just adds so much more chaos, right? So my policy was everybody uh, submitted their vacation request to me by May 15th. And by May 30th, I gave the whole team kind of the vacation plan, um, requests were prior to prioritized due to their start date. So, you know, if they'd been with me longer then I prioritized their vacation request, if you just, if you just started, you're going to fit into everybody else's vacation time. Now, the other policy I had with this, because I was a small spa, I had three treatment rooms and eight team members. Um, because I was a small spa, my other policy was I could only have one person off at a time. Otherwise, it would be incredibly difficult to um, stay open, uh, especially like on like a Monday or Tuesday. So there's two things. They had to submit their dates by submit their vacation by May 15th. Um, they were prioritized by their start dates and they could, we could only have one person off at a time. So I also, the caveat was I would do my best to accommodate everyone's um, requests because I really did value them. And I really did want them to have, I remember what it was like being an employee. I want my time off. I need a vacation with my family or my friends or whatever, but I promised to accommodate. But at the time, client care and business outcomes were always the priority. This is where you're going to have to be a little bit more flexible. This is the place where you may have to run a skeleton crew for part of your summer while some people are off on vacation. Um, As employers, we definitely need to be more flexible because our employees have way more options than we do. So yeah, it kind of feels a bit like we're being held hostage 
but it's, I don't want you to feel like you are, it's hostage management because it, it's really like you've got a policy and a system for your vacation request, but you're having to be a little bit more flexible on things in terms of what the, what the summer is going to look like for staffing. Now, so every, so everybody got like the vacation ones were, were done by May 30th. Everybody had the time off that they, um, you know, it was booked in. Um, if clients were already scheduled, we would move them around so that our summer vacations were in the books. Now, if staff wanted an extra day off here and there, um, my policy was that they had to find coverage for it. It's, they don't just come to me and say, hey, Kirsten, I'm taking this day off. That is not a, that's not the team player way to play <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, because that just puts me in a really bad jam. If you're just telling me I you're you're doing something, so hopefully you have a team, you've curated a team um, that's compassionate and caring and really truly cares about the business goals and the business vision and its directions it's taking, and we'll honor that with you know honor that and not just be like yeah I'm taking this day off or some situations I've seen with some teams where they've just gone in and blocked the day off and moved clients on their own, which is not okay at all. So that's my little system in a nutshell. It's not complicated. It doesn't have to be complicated, um, but it also means you kind of have to stick to the system for it to work with that little caveat of having a little bit of flexibility just because of where we are in the world. Now, I know the HR portion of your leadership is always a struggle. Um, it doesn't come naturally to a lot of us in this industry. We normally come up the ranks as a and, uh, you know, like a spa service provider. And many of us didn't have any kind of leadership professional or any kind of designated leadership training. And so I can understand why you feel a bit insecure about putting together these kinds of policies and procedures or um, systems, if you want to call it that. But I, I, I assure you, if you are creating policies and systems in your business, it will run smoother. So in terms of policies, um, where all of your policies need to be is in your team handbook. Team handbook is always all about, this is how we relate to each other as team members. This is how leadership relates to team. This is how team relates to client. It's all the policies. If you don't have a spa team handbook, um, I would highly encourage you to get one, uh, especially if you already have a team and you're probably wondering like, how do I get things organized? It's all up in my head and it feels chaotic. And my team really isn't kind of following along. It's because you haven't documented it into a, a team handbook. Now, a, a team handbook is a pretty big, uh, you know, project to, to uh, work on. I was going to say chew on because a lot of times that's what owners feel like they're doing is like arr, 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 chewing on this and never getting anything done. I have a <clears throat> spa team handbook template for you. It's got, um, I think there's 20, 37 pages in there. And it's got all the policies you could possibly want for your spa business if you have employees. And you know, some of them you absolutely, most of them you have to keep in there. You should be keeping in there. Some of them you don't necessarily have to have. Um, but regardless, you definitely need to have a team handbook. Now, if you want to purchase the template that I have, you can certainly do that. I'll put the link to my shop for it. And it's got, um, not only does it have the a Word document, uh, completely editable uh, team handbook, it also comes with video, short video tutorials to kind of walk you through each policy and why it's important. Just so you're not, you know, sometimes when you don't know, you don't know. This way, now you know. Okay. All right. So if you need a little bit more support around vacation requests and what to do with them, or you want to tell me a story or share a story with uh, how you have dealt with your vacation requests before for the summertime, leave a comment. I would love to hear about it or send me an email, Kirsten at KirstenFoss.com. I'd love to hear from you. All right. That's it for me today and Spa Business Mastery, all about how to deal with staff vacations because they can be a little bit of an HR nightmare to start with, but with the proper system and the right way you're thinking about it, it'll be a lot easier. See you next time.